Hi guys, I'm back with another haulish video. I guess this is a video of some of the things that I've added to my craft room lately, kind of like in the days before Christmas and then at Christmas. Um, and I just wanted to uh, share them with you because some of them are well, there's some boring things here, and then there's also some really exciting, fun things here, and some things that are a little bit different, so it's not going to be a typical haul video as much as just, I guess, some new things that I'm adding to my stash. So one thing that I've been doing is I've been gradually adding more and more mini market letter stickers to my stash because I'm a little bit afraid of not being able to source these anymore and uh, so I'm just kind of gradually adding to it and one of my favorite places to buy mini market letter stickers is an online shop called Starlit Studio and I don't know them I this is not an endorsement they don't send me free stuff or anything like that but I have been buying my mini market stickers on there for about two dollars a sheet and I think that's a really wonderful price for these for me here in Canada anyways. And I've been buying big chunks of them and I just placed another order this morning. And I, th I think I'm done. I think I've, I've got myself well stocked in mini markets. Um, but I especially love... <clears throat> these are all of the ones that I've bought from them. I've bought from them in two... It, th this order was one and then this was another order and then I just placed a third order so this is a good chunk of mini market stickers I love them and they're the kind of thing that I think is very classic supply that I want to be able to use freely uh, because I like using them for long subtitles and so I don't want to have to worry about being stingy with them so I just buy a lot so that I can just go ahead and use them so that's one thing that I have bought and uh, the other thing is, not this actually, I went to the art store and I got a couple of things, not too many, um, but I got light modeling paste and fiber paste. Now this is something I haven't tried before so I'm going to share it with you now. And then this light molding modeling paste is something that I bought because a, just to try it, because I really like most of Liquitex's products, so I thought I'd give it a try. And B, I wanted to pick up another bottle of this, light molding paste, but they didn't have it. This is the Golden. I think these two are very similar. So I like my products to have to be matte. And this is why I think these are similar products. First, they have similar names, so light modeling paste and light molding paste. And light in the art world usually means like the weight of something. So this bottle always feels like it's empty even when it's 100% full. Um, this is quite a bit heavier uh, in feelings. They're both eight ounces. This one has been used, but not all that much. It's one of those products that it really feels like it's empty. This is my favorite molding paste. This is what I use f as my go-to product for uh, using with stencils. It's my it's my favorite thing that I use in place of embossing paste or texture paste or whatever uh, people are using. This is just my favorite one. I've got a couple of different things that add texture. This is my go-to one. I love that it's so light and it has the consistency of whipped icing. I just love it. It makes me hungry. Um, this so I went to buy more of this, even though as you can see I still have quite a jar of it. I just, I do use it a lot and I have a couple of projects coming up that I plan to use it for, so I thought I would have a backup jar so I don't run out. And so they didn't have any at the art store, so I thought I'd give this a try and see if it's the same. It, um, it, it as I said, it feels a little bit heavier, but not as heavy as some uh, other texture items that I have. It's certainly not nearly as heavy as this fiber paste. So I am going to try it here for you right now. Uh, but when I'm shopping for these sorts of things, I like to make use of the little charting that they have on the backs of their packaging. And so this one that I love by Golden is as opaque as it can get. So the opaque slider is all the way over to opaque as opposed to transparent. And it's as matte as you can get. So it's all the way over in terms of matteness. And then it's also as thick as you can get. So this is what I like in a texture paste. I like it to be opaque, matte, and thick. 
and so uh, that is what this one is too. So it's at the higher end of thickness. It is, that's not really, there you go. I think that's focused, okay. Uh, it's at the matte end of the spectrum and it's also at the opaque end of the spectrum. So that's why I think these two are going to be pretty comparable, I'm hoping. I'm gonna give them a try. I have a piece of cardstock here. And then this is my new item that I bought fiber paste. I'm going to give that a try. Uh, and it is halfway between transparent and opaque. It is matte and it is, you know, on the thicker end of things. Um, the thing about opaque is that when you add color to it, you have to add more color. Um, whereas something that is more transparent, I find that I have to add less color to get the vibrancy that I'm looking for. So that's something to keep in mind. I usually use this white anyways, or uh, I don't know, I, I, I guess I, I tint it sometimes. So, um, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. I stocked up on cardstock because I could, so I did. Uh, this is something that I got before Christmas. I think these came from a cherry on top, which is not the most cost effective way to uh, buy cardstock, but I couldn't find it at Michael's or at my art store. And so, um, you know, it costs a lot to ship these to Canada. They're very heavy. These are three packages of 60 pieces of cardstock. And uh, so it's not, I prefer buying these locally, even though I mean, someone has to ship them so I'm paying for it one way or another um, but I'd, I'd rather shop locally for this sort of thing and carry it home myself than have it shipped at such a high cost but anyhow um, I got it so I, and I needed it <clears throat> So I know these are like enticing you, I bet. They're enticing me. I'm gonna talk about them, but uh, first I'm gonna show you my mediums. So these are my two new ones, and then this is my old one that I'm trying to replace. Not replace, but trying to, you know, get something similar to. So this is that whipped topping uh, light molding paste that I love so much from Golden. And so I'm just going to uh, smear it down and I'm gonna leave a couple of peaks, not quite that high because I wouldn't normally leave peaks that high. There we go. So that's the light molding paste. And now let's have a look at this Liquitex light modeling paste. It's thicker. I can tell you right now that it's thicker. Oh, but not much. Oh, it's very whippy as well. It also has the texture of whipped icing. I think this is gonna be a lovely uh, substitution. It's a little bit less gritty, a little bit smoother. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it is smoother. I'm just gonna pick some up for some peaks like I did on the other one. Here's the comparison. I will, I'll need two spatulas for this. And then this one, oh yeah, this one is actually thicker. Definitely more gritty. Let me see if I can. That's what they look like in the jars. You know, feeling it as you put it on is a big part of the experience with mixed media. This is definitely a wetter. This, this Liquitex, the new Liquitex one, is a wetter medium than this. This is brand new and this is old, so maybe uh, it might dry as, as it ages. You know, because you open the jar and you leave it open for several minutes as you work with it and then you put it away and you might not get quite as tight a seal as what they had when they kind of capped it in the manufacturers, like in the factory. So it's hard to say, um, but they seem very comparable. Not exactly the same, but definitely comparable. 
I'll let them dry and I'll show you what they look like. I used more product here, but that's okay. And now let's have a look at the golden fiber paste. Oh boy. This is a whole different product, which I knew it would be. I didn't want to buy two of the same. Uh, ooh, this is lovely stuff. It, um, it's very wet. It almost seems like cement or, I mean, it's not as gritty as cement would be, but yeah, it's kind of like a, like a biscuit dough or something like that. And when it, when it breaks off, it breaks off in So this is a paste that has little fibers in it, and so when you kind of, when you stir it, when it, when it kind of breaks off, when a clump of it breaks off from the rest of it, it has like a harsh edge. You can actually see it there against the cardstock quite nicely there. So it's going to have definite peaking on it that some other products don't have. And I don't know how it will differ when you use it on a stencil. But I'll do the same thing. I'll spread some of it smooth and then I'll kind of get some peaks on some of it too. And it definitely it has more of a gritty feeling in it and when you rub your hands together you can actually see some of the fibers in it. They're very fine fibers. I wasn't sure what to expect. I wasn't sure what the fibers would be like. So they're very fine. It basically on your fingers it feels kind of like lint from from a really linty napkin or something. So there's the comparison that I'm doing. I will come back when these are dry, which won't be for a while. Although this one is already almost dry. Oh, and so is this one. They both dry pretty quick. Nice. So here are some other goodies. I got these at the Black Market Boutique, which is a store I've been shopping in Halifax since I discovered it way back when I was in my first year of university. So that would have been... 1992 and I love this little shop. It's one of those little, uh, this is just one of the tags from an item that I bought at the store that my daughter bought actually, a little backpack. Um, and I'll show a Instagram of the shop right here so that you can see how cool it is on the outside. I don't have any current pics from the inside. I know I've taken pictures every now and then of some of the um, shelving with things lined up and that sort of thing. Um, it's a very crowded, interesting shop with lots of little imported, uh, mostly Indian things and um, lots of, like a whole ton of incense and lots of textiles and uh, lots of interesting things. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> I've always wanted to buy some of their paper. Their paper is, I think it's three dollars for a roll and the rolls are pretty big. Like this paper is 22 inches wide. Well, yeah, I think they're all about the same. 20, well, this one is 19, 20 inches wide. And, I mean, they're pretty long. More than my mat here is 24, and it's a good, um, 24 plus 5. So it's about 29 inches. This one is 29 inches long. They're all handmade papers and they're printed in India I believe um, and they're really really interesting and cool this one has these beautiful gold prints on them and I think the shop owner I follow them on Instagram and I see the shop owner taking like with pictures of of herself in India so I think that they like go there to source some of this stuff and uh, this colorful one looks even a little bit longer than the uh, other one. 
and the paper is like a really nice thick paper. I couldn't resist getting this one. The colors are just so interesting and cool. I don't know exactly what I'll do with this one in particular, um, but I know that I plan to use this in my layers. Uh, I will probably just cut it up, rip it up probably, and use it in between my layers. I just think it'll make a beautiful, interesting piece of paper. Nice addition. I got three uh, sets of this paper, three rolls of this paper, and then I splurged and got two of these wood stamps. Now these are hand carved wooden stamps, stamp blocks, and they are made out of a chunk of wood. And they're quite beautiful. This one still has a little imperfection in it. Yeah, like just a little, there we go. So this one kind of reminded me of Paisley, and I loved how big it is and beautiful and interesting, and I thought it would be beautiful um, to pull uh, ink off of my jelly plate, but also to use as a stamp on art journal projects. <clears throat> and this medallion one is also, this one was less expensive than this one, and I just thought it was really beautiful. They had a whole variety. They were all one of a kind. No two were the same. And they had tons and tons and tons of them. It was very difficult to, cho to choose, but I definitely wanted one medallion and one that was more of a freeform-ish type of a shape. These are quite expensive. I'm not going to be able to afford to buy a whole lot of them, but I might go back and pick up another one or two at some point. Um, but oh my goodness, I just love, love, love them. And I'm looking forward Forward to playing around with them. I'm not going to pull out my mixed media stuff right now and and demonstrate them, but uh, keep an eye on my channel because these will be making an appearance sometime soon. So let's check in with my little sample of modeling paste. So this is dry to the touch. It's not 100% dry. The paper still feels a little damp underneath, but this one is dry to the touch for sure. I could go ahead and, and keep crafting at this point. This is how it looks. <clears throat> so this one is definitely, oh, it's not quite dry. It seems to dry, well, I'm not sure that it dries a little bit longer than this one because this one I did first. Um, but they're definitely very similar. This one definitely is smoother and less gritty looking than this one. This one is quite gritty looking, but I think it's a good, it's a good dupe. Yeah. So this one dries to feel like fun foam and this one is not dry enough for me to be able to tell. This definitely feels velvety, a, a little bit velvety or like velour. Um, and it, when it's dried, really dry, and you press on it, it feels a lot like fun foam. I'm not entirely sure. This one is quite velvety as well, a smooth, an even smoother velvet. It's not quite dry, so I shouldn't be rubbing it quite that much. But uh, it se they seem to be very similar. This one, the golden one being a little bit more grittier than the Liquitex one. And this one is dry, oh, this one is drying already. It's quite gritty. It's, it's almost like this should be on this side of this, like from gritty to less gritty to very fine. Um, yeah, this is quite gritty and it works almost the same in terms of holding its peaks. And it, you can see these little fibers. It almost looks like there's hairs or little fur, little pieces of fur or something um, in it when you look at it really up close. And this is this one really up close. And then this is the original one that I've had in my stash forever, up close. So yeah, I think in, you know, if this was over here, this would be a nice demonstration of different levels of grittiness in a paste. I will at some point do a full demonstration with all of the media that I have just to show you what some of the options are. I don't have an exhaustive uh, collection of pastes, but I do have a little sampling of them so I can share those with you if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching and have a really great scrappy week.